find the best version of you mm. and believe in you that you can yeah. and you will. Yeah. That was one of the things that I had to, I uh, was like, oh, like an aha moment. The whole person said, like, I can and I will each day. And it's a process mm. that I can be the best version. I can be the best version of me, not anybody else, mom, grandmother, wife, if that's down the road, <laughs> that's yeah. down the road, you know, the yeah. best version of me that I can be mm. and experience one of the best. Hi, I'm Biz Cush, a life coach and therapist and your host here on the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. We're talking to women all over the world who found their way back to themselves, to their inner knowing, to their intuition, to their wisest self. We're exploring how to feel alive, authentic, engaged, and fully present in your life. Let's awaken your wise woman. Hi, and welcome back to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. I'm your host, Biz Cush, and I'm super excited that you're here. I just so enjoy connecting and talking to women from all around the world about their lives and histories and ways they have learned how to heal and grow. And today's conversation is no exception. And while Kimberly Bell and I actually, well, at least at the time of the interview, lived close by in the same state, we had never connected personally on other levels. And so it was really lovely to have her here on the podcast. But before I tell you more about Kimberly, I just wanted to let you know that this conversation could be activating or triggering. We are talking about childhood trauma and abuse, but we're also talking about self-care and healing and spirituality and family dynamics and personal growth. So I hope you'll hang in for this conversation. It really is a beautiful unfolding. Kimberly is a lovely soul and it was really great to have her here. And if you want to know when new episodes are live, if you want to be the first to hear them, or the first to know about them, you can sign up for my newsletter at elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up. And you will not only get on the email list, but you will receive free journal prompts, free writing prompts when you do. Well, for all you sensitive souls out there, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. And here's a little bit more about Kimberly Bell. Kimberly Ann Bell is an inspirational speaker, minister, mentor, and author of The Epitome of Kimmy, Accept and Embrace It All. She is originally from Salisbury, Maryland, and now holds two degrees. The first is in human growth and development psychology, and the second is in theology. She has served on the ministerial staff at St. James AME Zion Church and completed four years of conference studies. Through her book and talks, she shares her life story and personal experiences to inspire others to never give up hope while raising awareness to societal issues. Let's jump into my conversation with Kim. Hi, Kim, and welcome to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alyssa. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. I know we've been trying to get this scheduled, and now we're here, and I'm yes. excited, and yeah, so if you wouldn't mind sharing with the listeners a little bit about yourself and what inspires you. Well, a little bit about myself is I first just like to gloat a little bit and say I am a mom of four adult children, one minor that is turning eight, I think 80, but 
<laughs> and I have, I have seven grandchildren and I, it's just, I call them the strings of my heartbeat, <laughs> mm. the hearts of my five. So uh, they can just get about anything from my mom. <laughs> and then I send them home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a full-time worker. You know, I'm in the field of uh, drug counseling and case management. And I've been doing that off and on for the drug counseling, off and on for about seven or eight years and mm. the case management over 10 years. And I just, I, I really know that I'll probably be retiring in that, in that type of field somewhere. <laughs> but um, it's, I love providing resources and I just love family dynamics. My undergrad was in human group and development and my minor was in psychology and counseling. So mm. I've beyond my own personal experience with family, I've just always been so compelled, like passionate about a family unit, mm. regardless of what it looks like. But I just love to work with them all, mm. just uh, work with them as where they're at, you know, <laughs> And yeah. there, yeah, yeah. So, but um, what inspires me is me being an, an example of not a perfect person, but a, a person that will never give up, that mm. will continue to try and not be defined by my past. And that's what really inspires me is that I'm able to inspire another. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Because I don't feel like they're, well, so often we sort of see the perfect version of people and like mm -hmm. to, you know, and we put those expectations on ourselves that we need right. to live up to that versus like, hey, we're just yeah. human and yes. doing the best that we can. Yeah, yeah. And each day, you know, I work at it. And, and like you just said, it's not a facade. It's, hey, I have to find balance. I have to direct myself to, live in the moment and grieve because, mm -hmm. and take the time to grieve, understand that getting back to the family dynamics is, is not like anyone else. And I have to work with what I have. And that gratitude of being grateful, I have to remind myself and push myself every, you know, every day to be the best version that I can provide self-care. I have a support system that I keep reminding myself that they may come and go, but I got to understand that a uh, support system has to be made up of what can pour into me because mm -hmm. I had been in a cycle that I did the more pouring and wasn't getting the reciprocation of having people surrounding me that it wasn't pouring the right, either the right in me or pouring at all in me. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to learn, you know, I have the power and control to choose what is best for me. What mm. is best for me? What will this unit look like to help me grow, to be yeah. a better parent, to be a, a better person overall? I have to have a, a support system that there's them that's there that will tell me to, yeah. to pull back or will tell me this doesn't sound right, or this isn't you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. not just yeah. be the cheerleader or say, let me do whatever I want to do, but we'll yeah. move in the direction that I'm moving. And yeah. I've lost people, I've lost family members along the way that like the seasons, like leaves that did yeah. not have what I needed, did not yep. have that support or did not have, or in what I kind of had felt, I found also that some of them not only did not have, but wasn't equipped to right. give me, even yeah. down to my biological mother that really started the book. She just wasn't capable to provide me the love, a yeah. birth mother that mm -hmm. I needed. And I yeah. had to accept that. And that was very hard to oh accept as yeah. a child. And then grow up, even though I had an adopted mother, but grow up to accept that she put closure, no matter how much I wanted to open and want mm -hmm. a relationship with her, that I had to accept that this was her choice. Right. And I could not change her choice. 
Yeah. But I had to accept. And that's where that accept and embrace came from, is that mm-hmm. I had to accept that this is her choice and I have no responsibility and should not be responsible of the choice that she made. That I yeah. have to embrace that God still has a purpose and God still has a plan and that I could build my own legacy with my yeah. own children and my grandchildren and give them the love that yeah. I can break generational curses and yeah. tab the, the taboos that, you know, I was raised with was in the home, stays in the home. You're more compelled to look at, as we were talking about in the beginning of the conversation, if you don't display being perfect and that everything is all right from the outside and then yeah. get inside and it's a dergon turmoil. You know yeah. what I mean? I do. I do. I absolutely do. And I appreciate you sharing what you did because I know moms make the choices that they do, biological mothers, but also it takes work to be the kind of parent we needed, right? Right, To put the work into like if we didn't get what we needed from our biological parents or even our adoptive parents, like Uh it takes work for us to then shift those patterns and make, do things differently. Right. Right. And you mentioned just briefly, like in the book. So if you wouldn't mind sharing (laughs) people what your book is called. Okay. So it's called the epitome of Kimmy. And I came up with the accept and embrace it all. Mm. And I'm going to have a extension of that hopefully, if not published this year, will be published next year of the transformation. So that epitome of Kimmy, that was my first memoir, my baby, but I had to accept my beginnings Mm -hmm. for me to heal and for me to find my purpose and to even find my voice that had to come out of my my truth. And it's a, a very inspiring book because it's not bashing anyone. It's pretty much starting from me being with my biological, both of my biological parents and my oldest sister. And that transition before I was six years old, going to my biological aunt, that was my father's oldest sister. And just before I turned six years old and all that within the rejection, the abandonment, the physical yeah. abuse that I witnessed just before, you know, and then living in a household like we, we were talking about before, that it was all it was all brushed underneath the rug. It was like yeah. for years yeah. my biological dad would come in and out and talk to her about um talk to um his sister, you know, the woman that raised me, my biological aunt about his uh, life, him divorcing my mother, you know, my biological mother, remarrying, having other children, but recognizing me and um, greeting me as not his daughter. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just like Mm. I I thought that someone got, what you call it, amnesia or something. I I bet. I I don't know if I'm crazy or everybody in here is crazy. But Which, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. years of, and the book just takes you through the journey mm. and the journey of being misdiagnosed as mild retardation to oh I was really PTSD. Right, um, right. Yeah, Withdrawn and <laughs> exactly, and, yeah. exactly. Oh and then as God. you were saying, and I'm glad you, you pointed that out, my patterns of grabbing onto people and things and not wanting to feel the rejection. Of course, right. That whole abandonment. Yeah, searching for the love. And even Mm -hmm. though I had wonderful, I I know that the adopted parents that raised me and especially my adopted father, that was the one that called me Kimmy. That's why Mm -hmm. I got the epitome of Kimmy. They were one of the best to start my foundation spiritually and Mm -hmm work ethics and and rounded the, this person that I am. I was yeah. their baby. They were a lot older, but the book takes you through the generational era that I was put in, but I also grew up not being healed. And after a while, through four marriages, I was reaching mm-hmm. out 
went to my first therapist because these patterns just kept coming. I kept running away from mm-hmm. the area just yeah. to, I one time to either fit in or just feel like I'm one of the lost child, like out of, out of mind, out of sight. If they yeah. don't see me, if I'm mm-hmm. not around, maybe it would be better for me to feel the right. rejection and the abandonment and no acceptance, you know, oh, <laughs> until, yeah. until now I'm back still in the hometown, release my memoir. My adopted mother passed away last year, but my biological mother's um, living, but actually having the healing process go through and having a therapist and understanding that we as women and, and, and in general and people feel sometimes responsible oh, for yeah. other people's choices and other people's decision and fall yeah. into that guilt rut. Oh, and shame. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. shame. Yeah, you are. Yes, yeah. and shame. And yeah. I had to face the whole truth. 15 years old, having my first child, how that happened. What was my mind frame? The first child molestation that happened in the in the home was mm-hmm. geared and centered around their Christian belief, all because mm-hmm. this extended uncle had proclaimed and ask God for salvation. But this was the era that they were in with religion that right. once that happens and a person clearly states salvation, that they're born again, they're new. Mm. And so even with prior knowing that he was sick and that he had had done this, they welcomed him in the home. Like, and they didn't attend for that to happen, but this is what, of course not. yeah, sure. mm-hmm. yeah, sure. mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But... yeah. So, uh, and so that happened at 12, but I, like I said, writing this book had to be a moment for me yeah. to know that even though I would have nightmares and sometimes I would, and my adoptive father passed away without even knowing, finding that had happened to me, Oh wow! but I did get to it, tell my adopted mother Hmm. when I was grown. But even with, I remember writing the book and having a therapist, I remember saying that the healing process was so crucial and so profound for me to express it in a way and, and just share my truth to open myself up to say, this wasn't just in my mind, but this actually happened and I had to accept it was sad. It yeah. wasn't fair. Nope. <laughs> it was wrong. Yep. You, you know, there you go with the, the, the shame and the guilt. It was wrong. <laughs> and yep. all, all those things, believe it or not, are so powerful once yeah. you accept those things. Now, they don't have to stay. I've, been, I've learned to not to embrace that that shame doesn't have to stay nope. being shame and guilty of right. the beginnings of my sexuality, you know, and the confusion mm-hmm. of the love. <laughs> but I am now more embracing that I can have an ex- sexual experience beautifully without, mm. you know, without yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're shaking yeah. your head because you're like, yeah, yeah. I so, know. Yeah, I that, do. It was a process yeah. and I had to, and I'm yeah. so, I am just so through it all. I've, mm. I've been on another person's podcast that said, asked me, what would be one thing that you would change? And mm. I said, nothing. Because through it all, I am, I'm glad to be sitting here to yeah. express and, you are who and, and, you and are share today. the story. Yeah, even with the story, you are who you are today. I mean, I, I feel that. I really do. Even when we have an abuse history, I I know for myself, like I, not that I would ever wish it on anybody and it shouldn't have happened. Like you said, it was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. And I don't feel like I would be the person I am today if it hadn't happened. The growth I've had, the work I've done, like, yeah. So I appreciate your sharing your story and so for a lot of people, right? You talked about the uncle who 
said that he had been born again and that religion sort of allowed him to be welcomed into the home, even knowing his history. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, that might have destroyed their faith in God, right? That might have destroyed their faith in a higher power to protect them. But it feels like you have a very strong faith and a connection with God. And I just would like you to sort of talk to us about that, if you don't mind. Yes, I do. And I'm glad to share that. I am definitely a firm believer. It started with my my father, the, mm-hmm. my adopted dad. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, which was the first time a person has ever said that to me. And he said, I love you, Kimmy, but God loves you more. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was in an, a, a such confused state where I was about 10 or 11, where I wanted, I, I couldn't, I didn't understand. I, I wanted to still be, you know, go and live with my mother, be reunited to my my siblings. And I knew that the parents that loved me and put their arms around me was not my biological parents, no matter how much they loved me and how much they wanted me to pe- feel safe and secure. I wanted to be with my biological parents sure. and didn't understand why mm-hmm. I was singled out and my oldest sister was able to stay and I wasn't. And they stayed together and they had other children and never re- reunited me. So with him saying that, you know, he loved me, but this was a God that I didn't know. All I could do was see it through him mm. of this God that he was talking about that loved me more than him. And yeah. I would sit up in my bed and I would think about my biological mother and think about my biological father. When was he going to come back? Was that one day he was going to come back and and remember that I am his kid <laughs> and take me home, sure. take, me, take me with him? Yeah. Yeah. All these things going in my mind, I would sit up in my bed and hear my dad praying to this God Mm -hmm. and uh, praying for peace for me and protection for the family and wisdom. So that started the foundation. And so I said, you know, I let you know about the um, mild, uh, the misdiagnosed, the mild retardation. So for six years, I was in resource. And back then, uh, you know, I just turned 50 back then in the seventies, you were excluded. You wasn't included. Yeah, you yeah. were in a resource room. Yeah. And I would get picked on and a little bully when I would go to the re- recess that people, you know, the kids would know that I had spent time with the resource lady. Mm-hmm. And I spent six years with her. And I remember of my sixth year, the sixth grade, going to middle school at that time, that was seventh and eighth. And she was wonderful. She did not look like me. She was um, not African-American. I even put her, I believe her name in the book, her name was Miss Connie Basha, and she was my resource lady. And for years, and she was the very first one that said um, she wasn't going to give up on me. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was something special about me. Mm-hmm. And so for years of being with her and uh, reading this book over and over, it was where I um, couldn't retain information. I would get to a certain number and then go back the next day or the next week and would forget. And it was, the test was relevant like it is now. Back then it was PTSD, but then, you know, they just said it was mild retardation. But, um, and I was written off. They said I would not be able to write or read effectively. And I said in sixth grade, I did a simple prayer because I wanted to really get some action from this God that I was hearing my dad pray to. <laughs> and I said, I just, I just don't want to be different. And I said, if in the prayer, I said, I don't want to be picked on anymore. I want to learn. I don't want to be different. And when I got in seventh and eighth grade, I was in honor roll every, wow. I, it was like, uh, I, you would not believe, hmm. you wouldn't believe that I was in resource for six years, unless you went back to that elementary school and looked looked at my transcript, looked at my, my reports, mm. my records. Yeah. And um, so that really started. Now, I, did I not go through other things like we were just talked about when I was 12 years old and stuff like that? But that 
did never stun my faith. If anything, like you said, it increased my personal mm. relationship with God. Yeah. 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 And so I constantly like I drink wine every now and then. I found a, a love for margaritas. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I love dancing. And I oh, tell anybody, do I go to church? Yes. Am I a uh, religious person? Whatever. You, but top priority that I want people to see is my personal relationship mm. with God. Yeah. And that I trust him and I connect with him in yeah. my daily living and in, in, in this walk, in this journey that he already knows about and for strength and wisdom and guidance, but it's the connection and that I just want people to be inspired by understanding. It's not the outward appearance, but it's the relationship. Yeah. If you want anything to happen is that first of all, getting that relationship with whatever you believe in and that relationship within yourself to be the best that you want to be. And it takes work. It's yeah. not, and it's how you do it. You know, I tell people I, I'm a, I'm a dancer and I'm a music lover mm -hmm. and I have country music. I have jazz. I have everything that you can think of on my, on my playlist, even yeah. rap, but it's, I, that ha I have found to help my well being and to support my growth. And I can be on the road and I'm back working in a, a methadone clinic five o'clock in the morning and I'll put Joel Osteen on if I feel like I just need an encouraging word mm -hmm. or sometimes I got heart and soul on and I just want to hear R.B. song. But I connect myself with music and I connect myself with I'll put my head down and I'll just do a little short prayer sometimes and I'll in my office and I said, God, you know, today mm -hmm. I, I want it to be a good day, but today I'm just not OK. Mm. I am dealing with, I feel sad for my seven-year-old that's going on to be eight years old. We lost our father last year. I lost my, my adopted mother in the same year, last year, four months apart. Mm. And I put so much emphasis on her, on my, my daughter, because one thing, she's young and she was close to him. So I'm mm. like, I want her to be surrounded by support. And I said, Sometimes I give an example at the office. I said, guide me, God, into mm. what I need to, to receive for me. Mm. Let me not forget about myself, you know, yeah. help me to. And you know what? It comes through different ways mm -hmm. because I like we were talking about earlier, my support system. I just got a phone call not too long. Uh, well, earlier today. And he was saying, when have you been on a vacation? Mm. It comes in different forms and ways. I'm telling you, yeah. we just have to be open. I agree. And yeah. embrace when it comes and yeah. not be shut off. And we can shut things and blessings off by being judgmental, um, not letting go, not accepting. And yeah. I had to learn to do all of that. So when sometimes things come right to bring closure. We have to learn to let things go. I will say this because I, I kind of feel that maybe one of your listeners will need to need to know this of what I experienced through the through the loss of my adopted mother. Mm -hmm. Well, my biological mother is now the only one that's living and have never formed a relationship with me and have not accepted me or my children as a unit with her, as a daughter or as the, her grandchildren. Well. Okay. When my adopted mother passed away, she came to the funeral. She mm -hmm. never said anything to my children or myself, no condolences or nothing. But she was at the funeral and she was in the program to read her obituary. Wow. I will say this. That brought closure to me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I needed that. Did it hurt? Yeah. And I had support system surrounding me to kind of build me up. They didn't even know that she was going to be there, but they said, what happens at that funeral? Because my uncle, which is one of my dad's brothers, along with my adopted mom's sister, took over. Her husband has been dead and gone, 
but took over the whole funeral. He didn't want me to be a part of it because here my memoir was out and I, I, I told the truth about my family. I told the truth about me. Mm -hmm. She never had no problem with it, but he did. Mm. And so with some of the people that knew me, knew this, said, we're praying that God will help you to have enough strength and perseverance to let things go the way they want it to go. Mm. And you hold your composure because at times when we're trying to develop that best that we can be in, in life and to overcome adversity, mm -hmm. the enemy will try to do everything in a place to make a mockery, to make you fall, to make you commit suicide, which I had I had contemplated even with five yeah. children that yeah. I, I couldn't do this. Right. I didn't want to live through this. But that is something that we have to understand that we can't allow the world or the enemy to to have that happen. Yeah. Because that is exactly that is not our purpose. Our mm. purpose is to go through this journey and to go through the journey that God already has planned for us to be able to encourage that next person mm. or even ourselves that look where I am now than where I used to be. Yeah. And yeah. so, like I said, sharing that is letting people know had that had not happened now in the months that we're into going into another year. Mm -hmm. I know my mind would have been gone. I would not have been able mm. to kind of, the, the person that I know and the heart that I have, like it would have been broken and so hurt mm. because of the capability of people to do such a thing. You know what I mean? that yeah. I would not been able to hold myself together. Mm -hmm. But I have honestly been able to say that that helped my transformation to look at it in a, in a light that God allowed it. And this had to be openly done to bring my family, my children closure to, yeah. you can't change anyone. And if mm -hmm. they make a choice to step out of your life or not be involved in your life, or don't want to be involved in your life, it's nothing you can do. Yeah, It's nothing you can do but to accept it and grow from it and yeah. trust God that he will fill the void or he will allow some growth to ha happen in your life that I, and I pray for peace too all the time, that peace will come. You yeah. know, if that's what you want and you have to surround yourself into peace, mm. I deliberately, I intentionally don't surround myself in drama yeah, and, yeah. and toxic gossip or, or toxic situations. And, and here, once again, you have to choose Yeah, and true. whatever you choose, you deal with those consequences on whatever mm. you choose. But I have, I have claimed a lot of affirmations that I had thought of last year that I now start thinking about the tran the transformation and the situation that I was in last year to say, oh my gosh, before this has even happened, I remember putting in an affirmation that that I had to remind myself that to not realize or not expect the same from people that you would give. Right. Right. Not expect it. Yeah. Not expected. Yeah. And that was really hard. But I found that that same affirmation that I had had said before this, these things that even happened, I had to go back into my mind and say, whoa, this is really I'm starting to really live this. I can't, you know, and it is and it is OK. I can live through this because you know what? Guess what? It is so true. Yeah. I'm not like them and will never be like them. Right. Right. And I yeah. can't expect good to come from everybody right. just because i'm good or just because i want good you know no it's so true it's so true and to sort of accept that without 
also then saying they're bad. I blame that, right? It's like the right. acceptance of they just can't meet me where I need to be met. Right, right, right. Yeah. And yeah. not not hold any animosity, not hold any, you know, like we said, shame or guilt, but have closure. And yeah. and she actually gave me closure. Mm. When, I don't even know when she left the funeral, but I do know I used to anticipate because we still live in the hometown, seeing her and thinking, mm. what would I say when yeah. I see her? Is this the time that I could see her? And she said, let's go out to eat. <laughs> right. That, that, that brought closure to me that I don't anticipate that anymore. Yeah. 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 Mm. I don't look for any expectations anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, <laughs> there's part of me that wants to say, I'm sorry that your mother wasn't able to meet you there, but I appreciate yeah. that you have found your own peace with it and yeah. acceptance. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. And you know what? I have this yearning to understand and to say, you know, publicly, it may not be such a shame for her not to be able to meet me there because she may not have the equip right. to give me. And it would have probably tear my spirit up. And God is not going to do that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. When you when you are a person and you have to get in tune with your personality and characteristic, everyone's not going to meet that need. No. You are an unselfish person and you are a loving person. You are a kind person people that is not equipped to cherish that and to uphold that and care for that, they shouldn't be a part of you. No, you're right. You are absolutely right. Yeah. So if you, not that you haven't shared so much wisdom already, but if there were a piece of wisdom that you wanted to share with the audience, with the listeners, what would that be? Find the best version of you. Mm. and believe in you that you can and yeah. you will yeah that was one of the things that i had to i uh, was like oh like an aha moment the whole person said like i can and i will each day and it's a process mm. that i can be the best version i can be the best version of me not anybody else mom grandmother wife if that's down the road <laughs> That's yeah. not the road. You know, the yeah. best version of me that I can be mm -hmm. and experience one of the best. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. I love that. So if people wanted to find you, find your book, find your future book that's coming, how do they find you? Well, I'm I'm on the website, Kimberly Ann Bell, www is Ann with the E, Bell. And I'm on Facebook, Kimberly Bell. And uh, my book, The Epitome of Kimmy, is on Amazon. And it's also an ebook. And it's just a very short book, but it's a good, you know, you can get through it. <laughs> nice. I'm going to be publishing my next book on Amazon, too. But Instagram, I'm on there, Kimberly Bell. So Awesome. I look forward to anyone that I can just help. I mean, maybe all that I went through is not similar to a lot of people's lives, but maybe they know someone <laughs> that has similar. Yeah. Sure. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your being a guest on the podcast and I, I so appreciate your sharing your story with us. I appreciate you having the platform. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because without you would be me, would not Aww. be me, you know. So thank you for having the platform and taking your time to uh, allowing me to share the story. And I'm, mm. I'm hoping that it would bless many, many people and you continue to bless many people using your platform. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. It takes so much bravery and a sense of self to be able to share difficult stories, past traumas, life experiences that aren't perfect or seem perfect. And I just really appreciate Kimberly, Kim, and her willingness to share her story today with us on the podcast. I have not read her book, but I'm going to. That's my 
plan. I, if you are a follower of my newsletter or know me, you know that memoirs are one of my favorite types of literature. And so I'm excited to dive into Kim's book. And I just appreciate her willingness to share with us how her faith has helped her through some really tough times and really provided guidance and a path to help her live her best life and be her best self. And I think faith in a higher power, whatever that is for you, no matter what your religion or even if you don't have a religion, I think faith is a really important it's really important for me, I should say, to be able to have faith that there is spiritual guidance out there for me if I need it. So I hope that you took something away from this conversation with Kim and I, and we'll check out her book if you're interested. If you want to know more about my offers and what's available for me to work with me or to just get on the list so you get the podcast delivered directly to your inbox. You can sign up for my newsletter at elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up. And I will be bringing new groups for highly sensitive women into the new year. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up on my website for more info. I hope you have a wonderful week and take care of yourselves. And I look forward to connecting with you all back here on the podcast. Thanks for listening to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music by Andy Cush, sound editing by Laura Disler, and show notes by Kathy Cush. If you'd like more information about me, Biz Cush, and the resources shared today, go to awakenyourwisewoman.com.